Hell to pay delay. Documents do not begin to be turned over tomorrow. And, and a, a clear way and path forward for everything else is not clear here in the next couple days. Uh, there's going to be hell to pay by Wednesday morning. House Intelligence Chairman Devin Nunes with me last Sunday on Sunday Morning Futures on Fox News. He had a warning that if he does not receive certain documents from the Department of Justice regarding both the Clinton email and Trump Russia investigations, uh, it is uh, not just Chairman Nunes pressing the Justice Department for these documents. House Speaker Paul Ryan also voiced his support in getting the information. I am supportive of making sure we get the documents we rightly deserve, that we legitimately requested. We expect compliance. Um, I'm still getting daily reports from our committee chairs about the, the, the progress on compliance. I'm going to regroup with them tomorrow, but I expect them to comply with all of our very legitimate document requests because this is legitimate congressional oversight of the executive branch. Joining me right now is Alan Dershowitz. He is Harvard Law professor emeritus and author of The Case Against Impeaching Trump. Alan, good to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. So just to be clear, Devin Nunes is looking for any documents, and Trey Gowdy as well, any documents that relate to the Trump-Russia collusion investigation, which was, which was launched in July of 2016. They want to know what intelligence was used to launch such an investigation and any documentation going into that investigation. You heard Devin Nunes on Sunday. He said, hell to pay if the documents aren't there. He said, mm -hmm. I'm willing to go all the way, meaning contempt. What do you say about this? Obviously, House GOP members getting frustrated that they legally hold a deputy, A.G. Rod Rosenstein, in contempt if he does not hand over these documents. Well, they should be outraged at this. Uh, the system of checks and balances require that the executive branch cooperate with legislative oversight. There has never been a more important time in our history for checks and balances to be operating whether it's regarding President Trump's immigration policies, where we're seeing checks and balances in play, and whether it be the investigation, the Mueller investigation, or even the investigation that preceded that. Checks and balances requires that Congress have oversight over the executive branch, that the executive branch do its job, and that the judiciary check both. We're seeing that happening now in the immigration context, and we should see it happening as well in the investigatory context. So. I hope that the legislative branch will be able to get the material they need, but if not, they do have the contempt power, a power that's rarely used against the executive branch, but it's a power they do have. So what would that mean? Would that mean that they could push Rod Rosenstein to resign? No, they could hold him in contempt. Um, he would then challenge that in court. Uh, I don't think they can make him resign. Look, he should be recused. Uh, there's no doubt about that. To the extent the investigation involves at all the firing of Comey, and he was involved in the firing of Comey, he shouldn't be in the investigation at all. But I don't think resignation is on the table. I do think contempt is a possibility. But look, it's a sort of Damocles that Congress can hold over the executive branch. It's rarely dropped, uh, but often it's invoked. And I think the end result will be that the pressure will produce the documentation. Some will be withheld on grounds of privilege, but the vast majority should be turned over to Congress. Congress can view them in confidence as well. They don't have to release them all to the public. You know, it's hard to believe that the documents are not being turned over because of some national security issue or some issue that, you know, th that is, uh, is of particular interest to the DOJ and shouldn't be out there. When you have this text from Peter Strzok, who basically says, you know, he says to his girlfriend, we will stop it. And this text happened on August 8th of 2016. Four days later, we get the other text that says we need an insurance policy. We've had the insurance policy text for months, and yet we're just getting this one now. And, and, it, was, and, it, was, and it was sent on August 8th, 2016. So why were they not handing over this text until the IG report had to hand it over? You know, it, it's well, like that's not national security. That's just something that would embarrass Peter Strzok. We will stop it and, well, and lead people I, to believe that he was biased enough to actually dictate his behavior as the guy running the investigation. Look, in my experience, and I have long experience in this, the vast majority of claims of national security are really designed to cover up embarrassment or they're designed for political advantage. National security is used as a cover to prevent disclosure of information that might be embarrassing. Uh, there's no question that that 
tweet or that message saying we will stop, stop, that sounds like an attempt to interfere with an election by members of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, a person who has a particularly high role in the FBI, even if he didn't mean it, saying something like that, that he would stop the election. Look, I try to stop the election of President Trump by voting for Hillary Clinton, by contributing to Hillary Clinton. That's a legitimate way of trying to prevent his election. But when the FBI agent says he's going to stop it, that sounds like collusion at the highest level and an attempt to improperly interfere with a legitimate election. Congress is entitled to know everything about that in real time. And I'm not satisfied with the excuses they gave for not turning over that very important communication about stopping the election of President Trump. Yeah, I mean, after all, Peter Strzok took over running the investigation into Trump collusion in, on July 31, 2016. Eight days later, he sends that text. He's the guy running the investigation, and he sends the text, we will stop it. Now, Attorney General Jeff Sessions says that Strzok has lost his security clearance. Will that be the only penalty he faces? He was obviously escorted out of the building. What's your take on the accountability here? I don't understand why Strzok still has his job. When he has said, we're going to stop the investigation, that is such an improper communication, that we're going to get an insurance policy, and he didn't recuse himself. It was his obligation to recuse himself if he had those views and he expressed them to somebody else. He also has to know as an FBI agent, there's no such thing as private communications. Anything you send potentially can be made public. So he was potentially making public a statement by a leading FBI investigator that he was going to try to stop the legitimate election from going forward. That is clearly a fireable offense. I don't know why they're not firing him. Right. Are they afraid that if they fire him, he'll disclose information that will be even more embarrassing? I just don't understand why he still has a job in the FBI. Well, it certainly doesn't make me feel safe as an American to know that he's an FBI agent. It's New fallout from that recently released Inspector General report causing a ripple effect inside the FBI. Embattled anti-Trump FBI agent, that guy right there, Peter Strzok, who texted that he would stop Donald Trump from becoming president, apparently has lost his security clearance. This, as we learned, that three of the five FBI officials targeted for anti-Trump bias were all part of the Mueller probe. What? Here with the reaction, founder and executive director of Turning Point USA, Charlie Kirk. Charlie, uh, not surprising that Peter Strzok would lose his security council. I mean, he was escorted out of the building a couple of days ago. Well, why hasn't he lost his job? I mean, so they say that's a big deal that he lost his security clearance. I mean, he should have been fired instantaneously when this stuff came out. But this just goes to show that there is an unelected, unknown a group of bureaucrats at a very, very high level of government mm -hmm. agencies that have unlimited political power. And, and what if we wouldn't have unearthed these documents? What if, you know, the heroes in Congress, such as Devin Nunes or Mark Meadows, wouldn't have went through this unbelievable right. effort to get these documents? This all would just would have been labeled a conspiracy theory. So we know about uh, five employees mm -hmm. uh, 
at the FBI had these anti-Trump texts, but how many others are they? They just Precisely. didn't catch. Well, right. And how much other behavior is there that any logical conclusion can say there was probably deleted documents and, you know, reappropriated right. assignments that went against this president time and time again. And this should exonerate the president completely when it comes to the Mueller probe. Because, remember, this is the very institution that started the entire fake dossier right. that, that ended up uh, launching this, pro this uh, investigation. And, Charlie, the fact that Rod Rosenstein will not release the stuff that Congress wants to see, just so they can figure out why did this get started in Stunning. the beginning? Because it does look to many on the political right, and you mentioned a couple of names uh, that have been at the forefront of this, it looks like the FBI has redacted a bunch of stuff That's because right. it, it makes them look bad. They're, they're not going to hand them over the documents because it started on flimsy, uh, a flimsy premise. No one should be above the law. And what you're seeing here is you see a level of government bureaucrats and agents that allow their political bias to get directly into their work. And then when you're, they get challenged, they say, how dare you challenge our work or the integrity of the FBI? The thing that I found most disgusting about the IG report was the one sentence, after all these findings, right. the integrity of the FBI is still intact. Are you kidding me? You received gifts right. in exchange with reporters. There, you have text messages of senior level FBI agents saying, no, 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 don't worry, we'll stop it. And the integrity of the FBI is still intact? I don't think so. And the President of the United States was correct in firing uh, Comey last spring, and this Mueller investigation should be ended completely and totally. All right, Charlie Kirk, thank you very thank much. You.